we move from that segue very nicely to a similar topic in games you didn't think that we played. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about early access games that we did play. Wow. Yeah. We <laughs> just rant about how you don't want to be sold games that aren't done. Unless. Unless. Unless <laughs> our early access prices well, and I, not full prices. And, and I think that that's important to note, too, because uh, a lot of early access games, the ones that we're mostly going to be talking about here, are, one, from smaller studios. They don't necessarily come from the large corporations. Um, they're ambitious titles, to say the least, but usually come from smaller teams that need to get their games out there so that they can fund the continued uh, development of it. Uh, you can usually see a lot of passion involved with them, at least in, in my experience. Uh, at least the better examples of it. There are some that suck. But um, you can see the development in there, uh, that they, they had a passion project, they wanted to put it out there, and they when they get developed, that's great. Um, I will say that I usually will not buy an early access game unless I already like the product the way it is. Um, there are some I could easily name that I was not big on. I tried The Long Dark. Um, I, I'm, I wasn't big on it. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I, I get the concept. It's not like any other game, which is good. But I, I, I didn't like kind of the linear, um, stuck in a tundra survival, hope the wolves don't eat you. Uh, <laughs> what if they do? Well, what happened to me in The Long Dark, uh, I, I was actually playing the demo version, but it was in early access at the time, um, is that a pack of wolves were tracking me down, and I was at very low health, and there was a car. And so I was like, well, let me get into the car so that the wolves can't get me. But now I'm in a car, and it's nighttime, and it's freezing, and I'm getting very cold, and the wolves are right outside my door, so I can't get out there. And I think to myself, well, maybe, maybe I just get my torch out. And I think what happened was I set the car on fire when I put the yeah. tor torch on, and I burned in the car. And it was around that point that I think the demo ended, and they were like, would you like to buy the full game? It's like, no. <laughs> no, I don't think I would like to do that. Like, do I want to relive burning myself alive in the car again? Do I want to no. explode in the car again? Nope. I'm not really like, well, surrounded by wolves. Um... But but we have played some early access games that were good and uh, that were actually worth your time and money. And uh, Alex, allegedly, allegedly, Alex, do you have an example that you could start us off um, with? Yeah, I've I've got at least one example here that I've got almost ninety hours into. Um, oh, that's pretty good. That's a uh, <laughs> Mountain Blade Two Banner Lord oh. of all things. Oh, yes. um, it's still in early access. The devs are constantly updating. Like the last, let's see, the last update here. The last patch notes are from October. And last, uh, no, sorry, that's the last big patch. And then hot fixes uh, again. The last one was November 24th. Um, but it's constantly being updated and worked on. And uh, the community has lots of support for it. And I think the community for Mountain Blade in general has tons of support mm. uh, from users and the uh, team behind it. And there's sure. tons of mods also for things that people want to see done in game mm. um, to make it work a little better or a little differently. And then they will also oftentimes look at those mods and see what people enjoy and throw some of those in the base game. Mm. Um, I don't know if you've played baron lord i play i played some of the original mountain blade i didn't okay that's probably for the best i wasn't i wasn't <laughs> big on it i don't know how similar the sequel is but um, um baron lords i like the i like the idea behind it and i enjoy a lot of what you can do in it i think the biggest hang up i have for me is that early game like if you're not like the, there's not any specific like stuff Mm. telling you what to do where to go it's kind of like you can kind of do your own thing there's a, a main story sure for it um and you can find you can follow that 
but you have to kind of find your own way to get there kind oh. of deal. Okay. Okay. It's the it's the Fallout 4 in Skyrim of uh, strategy games. Yeah. Where where you go, all right, here's kind of the quest you're on, but you don't have to go to it right away, and there's no set path on how you get there and, and all that stuff. Right. Um, and, and my experience with the original was similar to that. Um, I, I think I just kind of felt a futility when I was playing it that I kind of got tired of. But there was a, a few places where you'd go to a town and you'd be wandering around different parts of it and they would say, oh, you've been, you've been ambushed by a bunch of bandits. And now, like, anybody in my crew, they aren't there. So now it's yeah. just me and I have to deal with the bandits. Uh, and if I don't, well, that sucks for me. I'm going to get, like, kidnapped and dragged into the middle of the desert and hopefully escape with whoever's left in my party. Um, right. Th there was that, and, uh, and, and then the other thing that really annoyed me was uh, eventually I just kind of, like, went completely off script, and I was like, now, nah, throw caution to the wind. I get to a town. The town needs me to raise up an army, a peasant army, because there's some thugs, and we need to stop the thugs from coming in. So, yeah. so I spend the next few days training the soldiers and, you know, going through that motion so that we can raise that peasant army. And, and we do. And like on the fifth day, sixth day, whatever, um, the, the, the bandits come. The bandits kill everybody in town immediately. <laughs> I'm the only one left and there's, there's like six bandits that are still there. They come. They, they, they skewer me all over the place. And then it says, yeah, you lost the town. Sucks, huh? Pretty much is what they give me. And it's like, okay, well, that's the end of this title for me. <laughs> I'm not playing this. I just spent yeah. like five, six days in this thing trying to raise the army and, and fight and everything. And then it's like, oh, yeah, that didn't work out. And the town is raised and you can't come back here anymore. Yeah. I'm hoping um, Banner Lord solved those problems. <laughs> I mean, you still you can still get quests for that, like oh, train these troops for us, and it, it's kind of a pain in the butt yeah. to do that, honestly, because like the only way to really do it effectively mm -hmm. is to basically like take only those troops instead of your normal troops. Yeah. But then it's like, all right, but they suck. Yeah. So like, what do you want me to do? Yeah. Um. I don't know. It's it's fun. I I go back from it from time to time to play. Uh, cause I do enjoy it and I enjoy the combat, I enjoy having an army that I can kind of like tell what to do or... Oh, sure. Uh, leading it on the front lines essentially is fun. Yeah. I, I enjoy that, or you can auto-resolve if you want to as well. Mm. It, it and is, then... It is a kick in the teeth though, like when you get your specialty soldiers and you get, you, you know, you're able to get a little bit of an army together, and then just a random group of bandits come by and just kill everybody in your party. My, my issue was that... Or um, peasants. Yeah, no. Um, I haven't really had that big of an issue with that so much. Okay. The the bandits and the looters and stuff tend to be lower levels, so once you have an army that's kind of knowing what they're doing, you don't lose too many people. Mm. Uh, as long as you're commanding them well, or you or you outnumber them and don't go in way over your head. Um, but, uh, what was I saying? Fuck. You haven't, you haven't experienced the problem with uh, your army getting blasted out of the water by oh i mean i i definitely have as much though but not as not as much um so that's fun mm. but then you can take the prisoners and oh, sure. take all their goods and sell everything oh certainly certainly um yeah i can i can give you a couple examples too actually one of the ones that was the first i think early access game that I actually bought was subnautica and oh yeah! Actually, that ends up working out well because I think when it was on early access, it was like twenty dollars, and to buy it now, I think it's actually more <laughs> as a full release game. Um, but uh, Subnautica, uh, surprisingly enough, even though I hate underwater combat, uh, was so atmospheric. And what they were trying to do, you could tell that there were some technical limitations, uh, some some glitches and stuff like that. But the thing is that out of the gate, when I bought it, I felt like there was plenty of content there for what they were asking for. I, I did not feel like I was uh, betting on the future. I was, I was uh, assuming what it had now, that maybe there would no be nothing more. 
Now, I haven't actually gone back to Subnautica in a couple years since I initially played it, but I have heard about vast new quantities of content. Uh, land areas that they have put in, uh, the ships that you can actually explore before they sink into the sea. Like, a lot of additional stuff, and that's great. It would actually make me want to go back and, and play a little bit more. But I think it was just the fact that it was so atmospheric from the start, uh, and really, like, I'll, I'll try uh, Sub-Zero at some point. I'll, I'll play uh, I'll play Sub-Zero. Um, or Below Zero, I think is what it's called. Subnautica uh, Below Zero. Yeah, I think it's Below yeah. Zero. Um, I'll, I'll play that at some point because I like what they were doing to kind of like expand the lore of that. But it's just kind of hard not to love just the immersive quality to it. And essentially, at, truth be told, a game that kind of spawned a lot of other imitators <laughs> that wanted to be it in the future. Um, I, uh, I, I played one, and I'm never going to remember the name of it, Breathage. Uh, yeah, that's oh, right. yeah. Breathage. I did play that, and it's kind of quirky, and it's in space and everything, and you can tell it's kind of trying to be Subnautica, but it's not going to be Subnautica. <laughs> like, you yeah. can tell that there are games that are influenced by it. Uh, for a studio that, if I remember correctly, is only like eight or ten people that made that, and it's not procedurally generated. Those, oh, those, nice. those are like fully you know, rendered environments that are all very different, uh, that has a very long, lengthy quest line that you can go on, and, and additional content that was uh, done right up until its release. So, I did, I did appreciate that. Um, yeah. Do you have another? Or... Um, let's see, let's see. I know uh, one you mentioned was uh, Craftopia. Yes. Which Is that one you haven't picked up? I, I did play it a bit. Okay. It was on Game Pass, so I did play it a little bit to see what it, what it was. I thought the premise was really interesting. It's trying to be a lot of things. Oh, that I think that was the one big thing I, I problem I had with Craftopia was like I have no idea what game you want to be. <laughs> yeah, it's you want to be every game. like it looks and feels and plays like it wants to be Breath of the Wild, but then it's got all these crafting mechanics and base building and stuff. It's got dungeons. And it's got dungeons yeah, yeah, it's got and, lots of combat and 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 uh, harvesting mechanics and and you, yeah, you, yeah, you can do everything. And then it's got conveyor belts and factories in it. And a little Minecraft thrown in there. <laughs> yeah, it's a really weird, but it, like it, it is fun. It's something else. Yeah. It's it's yeah, it's definitely something else. <laughs> uh, Ray and I have played a bunch of Craftopia. Yeah. Um, we started playing that together. I think when we started dating, we were playing it together. Mm. Um. Well, you, and we haven't gone back to it in a while, and we've been meaning to, but we have a lot of other games we like to play, too. Um, and my game list just keeps growing, so... Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah no, it, it was it's really fun as a crafting, uh, cooking, combat, base building <laughs> thing. <laughs> um, but it is one of those... Yeah, yeah it, it, hits, it, it doesn't niche down into one, it's just broad. The art style is decent, you know, it's really cool, and I guess there are ways you can actually get, like, custom models in there, mm -hmm. if you want to. Um, lots of ridiculousness. Oh, yeah. Lots and lots of ridiculousness. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. Um, like, animal, like, animal breeding. Oh, yes, there's, that's right, there's animal breeding in there, too. Yeah, you can just there's breed lots of animals. You can go fishing. Oh, yeah. Um, sure. looking at my screenshots. That's, that's in Skyrim that's now, too. Yeah. Can... <laughs> yeah, that's in Skyrim. You can, um, do weird things. There's, there's vehicles, like, you can build motorcycles in Craftopia as well, and it's like, what? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things I don't like, and I think they patched it a little bit, I, I do keep up with the patch notes, is that, um, weapon durability, for instance, is just, it's, was yeah. a pain. I think they reduced the rate at which they degraded, yeah. at least, and they've added some stuff in so you can repair them better, but it was like, this is annoying. Yeah, it, it really was. I noticed that too, like, stuff breaks so quickly on you, <laughs> to an unrealistic degree. I, I think that degrading weapons is just such an odd thing. 
uh, in games because it's unrealistically fast when you consider how fast weapons in real life would degrade. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I don't do think... Ma- if you do basic maintenance uh, on, on guns or you just regular honing or just use a whetstone once in a while on a blade, it's not gonna, like, break down on you <laughs> Have yeah. you fire this many bullets or swing no. the sword this many times? Right. Um, I think in Dark Souls, they technically, if I remember correctly, someone was talking to me. I never really uh, paid that much attention. But in like the Dark Souls series, they'll make a note that yeah, your weapon degrades, but it's very slow because <laughs> it's not supposed to be quick. <laughs> it's yeah, not supposed to be a quick thing. Um, the uh. Oh yeah, there was a there was another one. I actually have three, but I'll, the second one I wanted to talk to you about was Grounded. Mm-hmm. Now that actually did come from Obsidian. I think it's one of the smaller teams in Obsidian, but okay. they they did release it as an, an early access game, and it did come to Game Pass like the first day. Um, I get did get to play it when it originally came out. I was just kind of fascinated with this very interesting concept. Of having a survival game, but basically in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Right. It's and it is. It looks great, and I was really impressed that like this is supposed to be an early access game, and a lot of people were like, "Boy, it feels like it's pretty, you know, detailed. It's fleshed out, even though it was an early access game." The problem, of course, was that you could probably complete the actual story quest up to the point that it was released. But, you know, d- that it had when it was released in about 15 minutes if you knew what you were doing. Because they they had not really developed much except, like, yeah, you know, learn how to, you know, craft stuff and make your, you know, houses and stuff. And then make make a journey to the tree and find the little, little robot dude that will tell yeah. you there's more content to come. Um, since that point, though, and I haven't really played it again since that original release they have released a ton of stuff there's like birds there's koi fish in in the ponds there's like a whole bunch of of new content that they've expanded additional armor and and gadgets and tons of new stuff but um but that really was for more of a large studio not like a like a small indie dev company (laughs) yeah um but and the idea that you can play with like up to four people that's fun you could all just be the kids uh, trying to figure out what you're going to do with the you know, the ladybugs that walk, or or the evil evil spiders because those, yeah. those spiders are horrifying. You know what I want to see in a Honey I Shrunk the Kids slash uh, grounded type thing is uh, mm. I want to see someone mow the lawn sometime. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking that that's got to be an expansion if they haven't already done it. Um, the, okay. the 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 birds and the fish are terrifying enough. But uh, and then yeah, you just hear that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it starts getting louder, and you have to evade this giant lawnmower. The one nice thing is that if you can like hide from the lawnmower, and the lawnmower goes over you, if the grass blades were then on the ground, and you could pick them all up so you could use them. <laughs> Because yeah, because grass is like one of the big uh, crafting materials in that game. Oh yeah, you chop down the the grass and you can use it. So that would be fun. That would be fun or terrifying or people just walking through the yard and you can oh, yeah. get stepped on. A dog or a cat. Dog or a cat. Yep. Yeah. That would be that would be. I mean, especially a cat because I'm going ooh something to play with. Oh yeah, something to play with. There could be a whole like sub level where you're inside the cat's stomach and you have to get out. <laughs> Jonah. No. Jonah, where's the whale? Okay. <laughs> that's that's probably the fish in the pond. That would be fun. Um, did you uh, did you have a third that you can cite? Not that I can think. I'm yeah, I actually yes yes I do I do have a third. It is satisfactory. It is satisfactory. Okay. It is satisfactory. Okay. I have put. I don't know how many hours it's on Epic. I'd have to open up Epic. Is Epic right. launched? Can I open up Epic really quick? I can't. Give me one second. <sighs> Satisfactory, you can just make the weirdest factory uh, conveyor belt line imaginable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got into that from watching Let's Game It Out. Sure. Because um, he did, a, he's done a ton of <laughs> Satisfactory videos that are just fantastic and ridiculous. Mm. It's one of those games where, you know, you can play it however you really want to. It's all about building a factory and then just 
your goal is to build a bigger factory and oh, more yeah. optimize it potentially yeah you don't have to optimize it you can be very unoptimized it's fine mm-hmm. you can build conveyor belt natos <laughs> and then wrap those conveyor belt natos in pipeline tornadoes fun like like josh did um nice i have uh allegedly five days of time in satisfactory oh so like 125 and, hours or so yeah yeah that's and to be to be fair good. um some of that time is spent with the game running I, without I me playing that. um because then you can be like all right well i need some of this stuff and wow my power supply isn't gonna go out at all because this is all automated so uh i'm gonna go to bed and uh have fun playing in the background game right right um i i do have a few that are on my time cards that say that i've played for like 150 hours and honestly i've probably played for five uh, b <laughs> because what happens is like i'll be playing the game and i'll just shut my like i'll just put my system to sleep but the game's still technically open yeah. So until I come back two days later. <laughs> and right. It, and it's like, wow, you've been playing for 50 hours. Nope, I've been playing for two. <laughs> but yeah. I'll, I'll take I'll take the time in. <laughs> if you want to say that, been idle that whole time. I haven't gotten very far in 50 hours. Uh, <laughs> how many conveyor belts have you put up in, in Satisfactory? Oh, so many. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's got conveyor belts. I don't build them crazy, like, I don't build conveyor belt weaves. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that one. No, I didn't. Um, you know, like, a cross weave? Yeah. Yeah. That. Of conveyor belts. Perfect. It's impressive. Oh, yeah. It took them, like, seven hours to build it or something. And It's means, unnecessary. It's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. But it's, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like, he has that as a legacy. Is the um, weave of... Yeah, is there a limit is his legacy. Yes. We... And it's a great legacy. <laughs> it is. So, we, TLDR, um, we watched him do some stream yesterday, because mm. he does Twitch. Yep. And it was for uh, Farming Simulator 2022. Oh, God. <laughs> and two hours into the stream, he still hadn't gotten into the game properly. Yeah. Well, because if you get into the game properly, it's farming sim 2020. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Um, yeah. yeah. But, like, it was trying to get the game set up, and he was playing with someone else who was streaming. And they were trying to get it, and it wouldn't work. And so I came back later on, five hours later. They were still playing, and they... Boy, he had $2.8 million. Yeah. <laughs> By opening farms, taking out loans, and then closing those farms after giving the money to his first farm and then closing those farms. So he was oh. like, yeah, I can buy whatever I want for these vehicles. I just keep buying vehicles, building new farms, and then selling them. Yeah. Taking out loans, giving out all the money to my other farm. Whatever works. So, you know, within, within two hours, within, like, two hours of playing the game you found a way to exploit for lots of money perfect yeah so if you want to ever play farming sim 22 infinite money is pretty really easy to get that's good um so. th the reason i never played the farming sim series is because it felt like uh if you took stardew valley but took out all the whimsy and character development <laughs> oh okay so it's if you played stardew piece. if you played stardew valley but better no no. Because I, I was not a fan of Stardew Valley. You were not a fan of Stardew Valley. Or or Terraria. We can't talk anymore. I, I okay. didn't care that much about Terraria. End of the show, bye. End of the show. One of my favorite games of all time, Stardew Valley. I'm looking nope. forward to, uh, to what is it, Ghost Chocolatier? Spear Chocolatier? It's, nope. It's the new one. It's good. It's a good nope. game. Doubt it. Anyway. <laughs> um... My my last one, though, that I wanted to mention is one that I actually recently played, and we played it on stream, and that was Everspace 2. Technically, it I, is. Oh, yes. I thought, I thought you were going to say Deer Simulator. No, actually, that's a full-release game, apparently. That's that's Jeez. done. That's done. They don't need to improve that at all. 
But Everspace 2 is technically an uh, early access game. They are still working on it. You can tell in several places when you get into the menus as well that there are placeholders for more levels that they just have not introduced. Uh, right now, you can go up to like level 20. You can tell that it's built so that you could do like 30 in terms of like the, the, the overall framework. And there are a lot of systems that they haven't opened up. But, and you did see me play this on, on air, it feels like a pretty polished game experience out of the gate it it's a it's a very satisfying one being able to go to all of these systems go around these different solar systems and and, and you know even to actual bases some that look like cities out of blade runner some of them that are actually on ground um bases going into the, the you know the tunnel systems of planets and it all feels very you know complete out of the gate it's just that you can tell that the storyline isn't isn't done and uh that there are caps that it was not supposed to have um i have seen some of the updates that they've done where the different ships aren't just like bombers or fighters but they actually have specific names now attached to them uh and uh there's eventually going to be customization for the, the different parts on it because it's all kind of randomly generated right now but um, great dogfighting. It will probably end up being close to the top in terms of my uh, best to worst 2021 list. Uh, because one, haven't played as many games from this year. But also, it was just it was a very impressive outing uh, for, for, for the studio. And uh, I'm liking where they're going with it. But you can play it right now out of the gate. And I would not discourage you from it because it's good right now it's good now <laughs> anything yeah. they do past that is is uh, even better um so there is that you know what i am in, uh, surprised by that you did not mention though is that you did not mention elite dangerous that's not early access it was originally though i don't think when i got it maybe not when you got it but but once upon a time though yeah, it um, was actually uh, back in 2015 mm -hmm. is when it released. So it's been out for almost seven years. Oh my god! Yeah, Jeez. I don't think I had it way back then though. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, but I do remember that I think when I originally uh, got a chance to play it as a demo, it was in early access at that time. Hmm. Um, Maybe it's but... gotten better. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's still way too complicated for me. <laughs> I still love it. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear you. It is one of the largest game worlds in video gaming. Yeah. yeah. It is that's... only, I believe, surpassed by No Man's Sky. Well, that's because No Man's Sky doesn't take place in our universe and it's procedurally generated. Right. The but, Man's Sky is, I believe, infinite. Uh, it is trillions of galaxies, something like yeah. that. Um, uh, and, and, and Elite Dangerous is large number, but finite. Large number, but it's finite. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that when they actually looked at scale, Elite Dangerous is the second largest game environment there there is on the market. So it's pretty big. Yeah. And, and frankly, and frankly, if that was the largest, I think that we'd be fine. We would never need anything larger. You can't do everything. Still, <laughs> still looking for a space trucker crew to game with. Yeah, well, you'll get that convoy one day. Mm, probably not. Gotta roll up there, good buddy. Sorry. I'll, I'll this put... here is a rubber duck. Now I gotta find a rubber duck to put over your face in this next part. That'll be great. <laughs> 